If you have been in the Clojure community for a while, you have probably heard of the Atomic, but maybe you have never used it. This is the first video in a series in which I assume no knowledge of the Atomic and start to explore its feature. Clojure is built around the idea that values must be immutable. The Atomic brings the same principle in the database world. The Atomic is a distributed database, but the first step is to understand how it works. So, in this video, I will start it as an in memory database on a single node, and we start to interact with it in the REPL. The Atomic is not open source, but it has recently been released as free to use. So, this is a great moment to try it. I would really suggest you to try it, there are some really nice ideas behind it. I create a new project and open it inside Emacs. First, we have to add the dependency. There are two bindings for the Atomic, client and peer. For this video, we use peer because it starts a node locally. Now I can start the REPL. The Atomic is simple in the sense that its structure is composed of a small number of components. But it is not easy at the beginning, you have to get used to the way of thinking. In Atomic we store entities, and each entity is composed of attributes, each of which has a value. To do this we basically need a table with three columns, entity, attribute and value. And this is not far from what is actually stored. The first step is to understand how to do basic CRUD operation. We require the library, and then we have to connect. So we define the connection string. What's important is that we are using an in-memory database and we call it inventory. And then we can create the database using create database. Then to interact with the database we need a connection. Now we can actually start writing data on the database. The first step is to create the schema. In the atomic everything is data, as in the Lisp tradition. And the same holds for the schema. We want to store data about products. Each product is characterized by three attributes, a name, the quantity and the price. We have to specify also other details like the value type, the cardinality and the documentation string. Finally, we can use transact to actually send the schema to the database. And we can see that it is successful. For the moment we do not analyze the result because we will talk more in detail about it later on. Now that we have the schema we can actually send some data and then try to read it to verify that uh, we have written it successfully. For example we have 10 copies of KNR while 0 of uh, SICP. To actually store them on the database we can use transact again. And now let's read it. First of all we need the current value of the database. Then we can query it using Q, which is, which is a short name for query. In the queries we do pattern matching on a list of three elements. The first represents the entity, the second the attribute and the third the value. So we could have multiple lists which share the same entity but uh, represent different attributes with different values. We want to find the product name, question mark product name will be the place mark for the name of our product but will also be the result of our query. The goal of this query is to find all the different product names we have. So we don't care about the entity, the attribute has to be product name and the value product name. We can see that the result is a set with uh, two lists that contain a single value, which is the prod name, one with SICP and the other with KNR. Now suppose that we want to find only the products that uh, have the quantity equals to zero. So we add a new condition and we want to say that for the same entity for which prod name is the product name, we also want the count to be zero. So we add a new constraint on the entity and we say that for the same entity, the product count must be zero and the result is only SICP. Now we want to update the database and say that for this specific entity we have 20 copies instead of zero. So instead of the product name we have to return the entity itself and we fix the name of the product. 
we save this value inside a variable. We have seen that this is a list of a set, so we can get the value using a first, which is the composition of first with itself, the first of the first. And then I move the list inside. Now that we have the product ID, we can update the value, always using transact. The atomic is immutable, so we cannot actually change a value. All we can do is append a new value that will be the new one. The ID is prod ID, while the new count is 20. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Now we can understand better what's inside the result. In particular, we are interested in the transaction data. A datum is each tuple stored in the database. The first one is just a timestamp. We don't care about it. Each tuple is composed of five elements. We have already discussed the first three. The first one is the entity, the second identifier for the attribute, and the third the value. But only with those three datas we cannot understand when a datum is changed. So to make unique each entity attribute we also add a timestamp and the kind of operation. It can be a create or a delete operation. At the beginning, it may sound strange to have a database in which you cannot do update, just append, but you have to think about those tuples as facts. We are making an assertion at a specific time. In the future, we cannot change a previous assertion. We can just make another one. So how to read this result? We can see that for the same entity and the same attribute, the first one add a new value, while the other removes the old one. Now, if we query for the product with count zero, we expect to obtain no result because we set the CICP to 20. But we got one value. In particular, we also fixed the title, but we can query for any product and we got one result anyway. The problem is that the Q does not take as input the connection, but a particular value of the database. So we have to get a new value for the database. Now, if we do the query again, as we expected, we obtain no value as a result. For today, this is all. In the next video, we will put what we have learned in a real application.